Welcome to this week's End of Days update coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Gosh, we had a great time this last weekend. Our home church, World Outreach, got to get into a little bit about the rapture. And I keep saying, keep forgetting to talk about England, our dog. Uh, he's what who, who everyone wants to see. So sometimes he can come with us down to the office and sometimes he can't. So And when he's usually here, he's here for about maybe a second or two and then he gets out of the picture so he knows how to do it so we're coming to you every week to look at the different things that point to the coming of the lord and specifically the gathering of nations for the ezekiel 38 war and it's in, it's bizarre that people go well why would we need to know all this what would be the purpose of uh, keeping up with this jesus was really plain in matthew 24 about uh he called them birth pains. He said there'd be contractions right before the coming of the Lord. But if you'll notice in Matthew 24, it's all about the second coming. It has nothing to do with the rapture. Remember where it says when one's taken and one's left, that's not the rapture, that's at the second coming. So Jesus was answering those guys' questions, what's it going to look like? And he answered them with called the tribulation because <laughs> he's talking to Jewish boys there. He's not really talking to the church because at that time the rapture was a mystery. It wasn't even mentioned at all. So when you look at all these things in Matthew 24 about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, because the kingdom's coming. And that's what Jesus said about the birth pains. He said, don't get caught up on how uh, intense the labor pains are, but get caught up on what's coming after the labor pains. And that's the kingdom. That's the baby. The baby's coming. So we look at all this because uh, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees over and over again. Only time he ever rebuked the crowd was when he said, you don't know your hour of your visitation. So he, he wanted them to know. Same thing with the madman of Gadara came in Demons started crying out, Are you come to torment us before the time? So they knew Jesus was on a schedule, but he was early. So demons can know the schedule, how much more the church. So we get into all these things to see the finish line. Because what, what changes when you see the finish line? Your countenance changes. Your, your thought pattern changes. Everything gets pushed aside so that you accelerate and hustle. So it's not an escape theology. It's a hustle theology. And as we get into the things that happened this last week, it's all about the Lord wants us to know all this because He loves you so much. He wants you to go, hey, I'm living just before God comes to the planet. Wouldn't it be appropriate and smart to get in position and do what we're called to do as the church? As opposed to, duh, I don't really know anything's going on. And that's been kind of the thought pattern. Ah, these things have all happened before. I hear people tell me that all the time. No, these, these signs have never happened before, ever. Never has there been a generation where all these things come to pass like it's coming to pass right now. So let's pick up with what's happened in Israel this last week. Probably the, the largest thing was Iran's president getting killed and their foreign minister getting killed in that helicopter crash. People have tried to blame Israel, but really listening to the things that I've listened to this last week, it looks like it was just bad weather. Helicopters try to get below the clouds and the mountains are there, and that's what causes things like that to happen. It is intriguing, though, that you have the number two and number three person from Iran get killed when they are literally completely supplying Hamas, supplying Hezbollah, supplying the Houthis, and supplying uh, fighters in Syria. So on four different fronts, those two men were responsible, except for the Ayatollah Khomeini, with trying to annihilate Israel. The president of Iran said over and over repeatedly, we had to remove the rabid dog from the Middle East, talking about Israel. And he called for the annihilation of Israel. And really, that's kind of comical because you have the international uh, court uh, literally say that they're going to arrest Netanyahu, the international Crim criminal court. And uh, I love that the EU came out saying that's absolutely absurd, that's ridiculous. But then you had the UN say, uh, you have to arrest Netanyahu. When Netanyahu, Israel has gotten out 950,000 people out of Rafah so that they didn't get killed when Israel's having to clean Rafah out. You don't hear other uh, countries doing that. Germany even said they would arrest Netanyahu if he came there. Now that's absolutely ridiculous and absurd. The people that need to be arrested are the people that tried to attack Israel on October 7th. Now you got to remember that was the equivalent of 39 9-11s is what happened to them on October 7th. So uh, you know you have so many things happening that I, I literally this week was like oh my lord one more thing and people go well why do you focus on all the war things? Well the war things are visible and tangible. You can see them just like Hitler when he amassed troops on the border of Poland, amassed troops on the border of Czechoslovakia, that meant they were going to invade. And then Hitler, I mean uh, Russia, amasses all these troops on the border of Ukraine. Everybody goes, oh, it's 2020, 2022, they'll never do that. No, they invaded. So then you have Putin meeting with China's leader this last week, and they were dis discussing uh, uh, economics. And then there, it came out, what they mainly discussed was, the only thing we really have to deal with is America. So America is going to be the one to stand with Israel like they are. And right now, it seems like America is the only nation standing with Israel like this. Some are, but it's ridiculous to have the International Criminal Court say that about Israel. So 
you got so many things going on behind the scenes that, that are coming out right now about nations wanting to attack Israel. Then you have the stuff about nature. But the thing about Russia, uh, before we get to nature, was Russia, they developed a satellite with a nuclear component to it. It's not really a nuclear weapon, but a nuclear component to it that can blow up our satellites. Now look at the danger of that. And then so Russia came out the next day saying, no, America's doing that, not Russia. So uh, they blatantly got caught coming up with weapons that there was a treaty in 1967 so that nations wouldn't do this in space. Well, they're doing it. Why? Because the Bible says they're going to attack Israel uh, right after the rapture. And the, and the Bible says that God wipes out 85% of them. Five, six of them are wiped out so that the heathen may know that he is God. Notice the tone of that. During the church age, God doesn't intervene. But when, as soon as the church is taken off the earth, you, you go back to old covenant time and God physically intervenes for them. So many, many things happen in nature. I don't have time to get into a lot of it, but boy, you have in Italy what, what the newspapers called a swarm of earthquakes all over the nation of Italy. And then you have in Southern California this last week, this last week, a thousand and ten earthquakes. The seismologist said, and the geologist said, this is, this, anything over a thousand means there's about to be a massive earthquake. So you don't want to create fear, but the Bible said these things would happen. So if we look at what the Bible says would happen, so we may, should pay attention to that because it blatantly shows us things that are happening that the Bible promised you'd see just before it comes. If you got into all the intricacies of the Gaza aid, it looks like 75% of the Gaza aid keeps getting captured. Uh, by Hamas, and they keep stealing all the stuff that's trying to go to people that need it the most. So people don't talk about that, but that's what's really happening. You've got an increase of fighting up in the northern part of Gaza. You've got an increase in rockets coming from Hezbollah, and Israel's having to retaliate that. So you have the lead up and the setup for massive amounts of war and a leader coming on the scene that's going to talk about it and say, hey, I got this all fixed. Because you've got in Europe right now, you have which is intriguing, you have Sweden, you have Portugal, and you have Spain, and you have Norway saying, we're ready for a Palestinian state. So watch all those European nations come out and go, it's time for a Palestinian state, it's time for peace, it's time for the Palestinians to have what they need. So this is a lead up and a precursor and a convergence of all the things the Bible said you'd see just before the Messiah comes. Wow. We're so blessed. We always go back to the scripture, though. I don't do it every week, but what's the Bible say? Israel made a nation, Jerusalem won back. Jesus said the generation sees those two will not pass away till all is fulfilled. But then you've got the Hebrew language restored. You got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got the revival of the Roman Empire. You have uh, the ritual baths around the Temple Mount fill up with water, first time in 2,000 years. You have foxes show up on the Temple Mount. You have fish show up in the Dead Sea. You have the Dead Sea turn blood red where Sodom and Gomorrah was on the Day of Atonement last fall. You have the five red heifers that are in the country in Israel that did get their ears tagged because of COVID, so they don't have a blemish. And they have to be used between two and uh, year two and three. And right now, that's exactly where they are. So that kind of freaks me out a little bit. But you have so many more signs. Men will be lovers themselves, have selfie sticks. I mean, the climate for what the Bible said you'd see right before the Messiah comes is exactly the climate right now. Men will be lovers themselves, itching ears, all kinds of different things like that, perilous times. But the Bible makes it really clear there is no bad news for the church. And for the world, it's the scariest time ever. Could you imagine not being saved right now? Dear Lord. I mean, even sinners know something's up. Hollywood has more of a sense of change than sometimes the church does. You have movies about zombies. You have the, the, the walking dead. Because there is a resurrection coming. The church is going to be caught up. We're going to be uh, changed. We'll be caught up and be with the Lord. So all these different signs are blatant and they're radical. If you went through all of them, it's uh, amazing. I think our book has about 79 or 80. But but then after all the signs, you got signals. You had blood red moons on Passover and tabernacles. When's the last time you had four in a row like that? NASA calls it a tetrad. 1967 when Jerusalem was won back. 1948 when Israel was made a nation. And 1492 at the Edict of Expulsion when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. So extremely significant dates for Israel and signals in the heavens. And then you had the Bethlehem star. You had Jupiter, Regulus, Venus show up at the birth of Jesus. Jupiter, a king star. Regulus, regal, king star. Regulus did retrograde motion and crowned Jupiter. Uh, so you had uh, Venus as well. So you have all those coming together when Jesus was born. What was the constellation? Virgo. This last year when they came together again, what was the constellation? Leo. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I'm not losing my mind. There was a bug right there on my face. So you have all those uh, planets coming together as a signal for us. And I hear people go, I don't believe that. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. It's all happening. 
Same thing at the first coming of the Lord. You had 19 specific prophecies come together. It was prophesied he'd be born in Bethlehem of the tribe of Judah, enter into Jerusalem on a colt. He'd be, they'd gamble over his robe, be given away for 35 pieces of silver. It would go into by a potter's field. It would get dark in the middle of the day while Jesus was on the cross. He'd be pierced inside, wear a crown of thorns. You know what the odds are of all those uh, uh, prophecies coming to pass in one generation? 480 trillion times a billion and another trillion. It's actually 480 with 33 zeros afterwards. In science, so many zeros, it's absurd to think that it happened by chance. So that's what the Bible said about the first coming. And there's eight times more scriptures about the second coming. So flawless the Bible is with all these things showing us where we are in time. What's it mean? Jesus. We're about to see the King. All the worship songs we do, all the work that we do, and we so long to see Him. You're about to see Him face to face. Wow, how blessed are we? Come back this next week. We'll look at what's happened with... I'm looking for what is going to happen with the International Criminal Court and uh, see how Israel responds to that and see what happens uh, next right here uh, before Jesus comes. How blessed are we? We're about to see Him face to face. Have a a wonderful week. Help your local church. Help your local pastor. Uh, Let's go for it. Jesus is just about to come. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us today at the end of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.